six years, they are talking about how do we envisage the planet 50 years or more to come. And their sessions are actually for head when you feel like it's expanding. And I love their dialogues because they are really, you know, engaging expertise and vision, you know, for a planet we want to create and actually dealing with the issues that will make us have a planet that we don't desire. I think what appeals to me most about Resilience Frontiers is, is the framing of the eight pathways that we're working with at the moment. They cover everything from technology to well-being to our financial instruments, some of the most meaningful issues for society. And we're doing that in a very transdisciplinary way. So not only from the top down, but also thinking very much from the bottom up and thinking about the kind of society we will want to live in in the future. This is the only space within the UN community that is thinking about post-SDG futures. There seems to be some kind of lock in our minds to only just be working towards the SDGs, which is a near future. And we seem to find it difficult to leapfrog beyond that. But Resilience Frontiers is one space that is forcing us to go way beyond that and to have the courage to do so and giving us the tools to trigger our imaginations to those far far and long-range futures. Being in, in the conversation with leaders from all over the world, thinking about the future, thinking about how we are going to create it together, is very inspiring. And at the beginning, we feel that how we will all come up with an idea that will work together. And we suddenly realize that the future is created by us. So we have this opportunity to create our own desirable future. And Resilience Frontier is giving us this opportunity. Resilience Frontiers are not using the conventional way. They're just ordinary people with the visions, uh, different backgrounds and uh, very wide experiences. Uh, and we're sharing this together uh, and learning how to collaborate, to uh, come out with uh, new ideas, something that's more creative, because I think this is the only way that we can do a, a good change. Resilience Frontiers is a very different initiative than the usual workshops, events, activities I have experienced because the initiative of Resilience Frontiers aims to create a different world, a desirable future for humanity. It's not to try to fix the problems we have been facing for decades. That makes the whole difference. And that's what we've been doing here. We've been looking at the different pathways that can create that sustainable society beyond 2030. And in so doing, we followed a very rigorous stepwise approach to expanding our mindsets, following which we started looking at the substance. What should be the future of water or water management? What should be the future of learning for sustainability? What should be the future of regeneration versus extraction as an economic model? And they went through a very rigorous foresight process, which then resulted in the end in putting meat on the bones of our draft storylines. What are these storylines? They're descriptions of those futures that are desirable, the futures that will give us permanent resilience. And the result of these deliberations is now a refined set of storylines that better portray the types of desirable futures that we want under these sustainability pathways. Resilience Frontiers tries to respond to the call of the science to transform our systems within the next decade. And in so doing, we cannot look at the future as a facsimile of the present, plus just environmental degradation, because the future will be different. The unique thing about Resilience Frontiers and their discussions is they dream the planet they want to see, not just to see, but to create. They see themselves as the creators. They see themselves as the lens looking through how the planet is today. They are also looking back and saying how the planet was. Then they are saying, we're looking ahead and wondering, what are the things that should happen for us to get to the planet that we want to see? And I thought this is the best thing we can ever get to.